What's up everyone, I'm Callum on Toast, and in today's video we have the Ultra League Battle of Spice, where trainers submit one battle winning with the spiciest and most unique team they can possibly put together, and we have some absolutely insane teams in this video. For anyone wondering, I'll probably be showcasing the Jungle Cup Battle of Spice either later this week or next week since the Jungle Cup will be sticking around for one more week, and it does take quite a lot of effort to make these videos, but with that being said, let's get into the question of the day. What's the most unique theme team you you've ever used or battle against? Let me know in the comment section down below and with that being said, let's get into the battles now. Alright, so heading into the first battle, we've got a Triple Cross Station theme team in the lead up against a Regirock here, and this is a pretty decent matchup here. The opponent actually not going to farm to a potential Focus Pass, we're still going to use a Shield as the opponent goes for a Stone Edge, we're now going to bait with a Night Slash, I feel like this is quite an unnecessary bait here, and the opponent does call that, but what it does do is put them into Scald range, so now we are full sending the Scald, and Scald will also be no shielded, it takes out the Regirock, and then they come in with a Giratina, so this also is not a bad matchup for us. We're going to go straight for the Night Sash here. This time it is the right move to go for. The opponent going to throw their charge with straight away, meaning we get a full snarl in for free, which will allow us to make it to another Night Sash very easily. So going for that next Night Sash, Night Sash is going to be no shielded this time around. And at this point, we are going to see that the Crawdon is actually going to double shield in the lead matchup here. Going for another Night Sash here. Is the opponent going to shield as well? The opponent going to let that go through, and they've got a Charizard in the back. So committing to the school not getting there, also not getting off a Night Sash, but it doesn't even matter. We are running smack down on the Claw Witzer, dealing huge damage to the Charizard. The opponent goes for a Dragon Claw. We're going to go for an unnecessary flex here, swapping into our Crabominable, catching the Dragon Claw. We can now go for the Bubble Farm down, and we're able to take that game. So heading into the next battle, I'm going to have a triple shiny shadow theme team. You guys know I love the triple shiny shadow theme teams. We're going to go for the Dragon Claw here, thrown just before the opponent makes it to the first charge move. They do correctly let the Dragon Claw go through, and we are going to shield at the last second. I'm not sure what charge move that was. Might have been Brave Bird there, so it looks like it debuffed their well, some of their stats. They're now going to swap into Greninja. We chip with a Dragon Claw, and then we come in with our shiny Shadow Salamance. Now, hopefully, we can go for the full Dragon Tail farm down, but they live with one HP. Are we going to use our shield here? No, we're going to let it go through. Greninja flipping switch advantage up against the Salamence, but we now come in with our Shadow Charizard, get the Wing Attack farm down, and they have Cresselia in the back. So we're going to go straight for the Blast Burn here. Blast Burn is going to grab the first shield from the opponent, but the opponent going to over farm here, allowing us to make it to a Dragon Claw, and Dragon Claw is going to be no shielded, correctly no shielded by the opponent, but we do chip them fairly well. The opponent going to go for, I think that was Aurora Beam there, and now we're going to come in with with our shiny Shadow Haunch Crow, we are going to respect the damage coming from another Aurora Beam here, and the opponent is going to swap back into their Talon Flame. We're not messing around here. We don't even want to tank one Incinerate, so we full send the Sky Attack there, taking out the Talon Flame. We make it to another Sky Attack. Honestly, it doesn't really make sense to go for Sky Attack here, as uh, Sky Attack and Dark Pulse are both 50 energy these days. We're going to see that the opponent goes for another Aurora Beam, but it's such a bad charge move that shiny Shadow Haunch Crow tanks it, makes Takes it to the Dark Pulse, taking out Cresselia, and we're able to take that game. So going into the next battle, and I actually don't have a Shadow X Blau to take a photo of or for the graphic, but it is a Shadow as you can see in the battle. Leading into Gallade, not great, so we're going to say swap and catch the move as well. Onto our Shadow Sneasler, the opponent going for a Leaf Blade there, and then the opponent makes a mistake thinking they would win CMP, which they definitely don't, up against a Shadow Sneasler. We go for the Aerial Ace, grabbing a Shield Advantage, and at this point we are happy to let the Sneasler go down. We are going to possibly come back in with our X Blau here. Yep, going to come in with the x -Bloud. We're going to have to shield this time around as it could be a close combat. That would very easily take us out here. So do correctly grab that shield there. Or sorry, use our shield. We can now go for a crunch here. And then we're going to swap into our Zeb Striker. The opponent's running Air Slash, which isn't ideal. You do either want to run the Legacy Wing Attack or maybe Fire Spin, which did get a buff a couple of seasons ago now. Or maybe even Dragon Breath, which is also Legacy, but definitely not Air Slash. But either way, we are now going for a Flame Charge into the Excadrill that comes in. And they no shield. Shield, possibly not expecting the coverage there and at this point this is game over we've put them into range where we can just astonish farm down both the Excadrill and the Gallade the opponent tried to catch a fast move there or something I don't know doesn't really matter we get the fast move farm down and we're able to take that game 
Into next game, not a great lead, leading with a level 50 fracture into Togekiss. So we say swap into our Magnezone, and the opponent responds with a Giratina. So not ideal, but we are actually running Flash Cannon. Now, Flash Cannon, not the best move ever, but it will hit very hard in this matchup. Flash Cannon is going to be no shielded. It does over half the health. And at this point, we've seen already the opponent did bait the first time. This time, they go for the Shadow Sneak. So we're just going to full send a second Flash Cannon. The opponent does need to shield this to maintain alignment, but no, they let that go through and that is pretty huge for us they now come in with amphros and i think that's a cmp tie if it is that's a huge mistake from the opponent wild charge also grabs a shield as well so opponent making all the wrong plays right now brutal swing will be taking us out we can come in with the fracture and the opponent is going to swap back into togekiss we can come in with our shadow magneton and we're going to over farm here throwing just before they make it to the next charge we've unfortunately awkward timing but very difficult to time a four turn fast move up against a three turn fast move there whilst getting that over farm at this point we're going to tank the flamethrower come back in with the fracture we get the double resisted dragon tail farm down and we will be able to make it to back to back dragon claws here the first one is going to put them into very close to the red health range we go for one more dragon tail and now a dragon claw from this range will certainly be enough damage to take out the Ampharos, and we're able to take that game so going into next battle here, and you'll be forgiven for thinking this is in the Great League, but this is actually an Ultra League Gligar, only at 2100 CP. So clearly there's a reason people don't power it up for the Ultra League. It's not got the stats for it, but this trainer is still using it anyways. And if you think that's crazy, well, there's also a 1900 CP Celio in the back. But here, unfortunately, this should be a very good matchup for us. But in the Ultra League, where we do lack stats, we're actually not going to make it to, well, we're not going to be able to win the two shield scenario here, as the opponent can go for a full incinerate farm down we did bait twice hoping we could make it to the aerial ace and get it off but unfortunately we're not able to do so so now we come in with the celio tanking the poison fang at this point we're just going to go for that body slam here body slam will be connecting it doesn't quite take them out there and then they make it to yet another poison fang so this elazzle is absolutely going off right now we do get the counter farm down which is nice and then they come in with a guzzlord we're able to make it to a mega horn before the opponent can make it to a charge move and it won shots the ghost lord they've got greedent in the back now unfortunately not running close combat but i don't think it really matters here we can just shield the first body sam we're then gonna over farm here throwing on the cmp type with the next body sam winning cmp and mega horn barely doesn't take out the greedent but it doesn't matter this body sam will be taking us out but then we can come back in with the celio get the powder snow farm down and we're able to take that game so going into next battle, we see Pylo Swine into Shadow Sneasler. So obviously if the opponent full sends a close combat, that will be taking us out. But we might call this here. We are going to no shield. It's just an X scissor bait. So really nice call. On the other hand, Avalanche would also still take out the opponent most likely. So the opponent does use their shield. We then get a swap and we're able to catch a charge move there. Not the best reaction time from the opponent as they go for an X scissor. They then come in with a Shadow Drapion. Because of that poor reaction time, we're actually able to make it to a Dragon claw on the cmp tire with a crunch the opponent gonna no shield this we're also going to no shield a crunch will be taking out the shadow dragonite but we still got both our shields remaining so let's see what we do here we're gonna come in with the pilo swine we're not gonna over farm too much just going straight for the avalanche and of course from this range avalanche will be taking out the drapion the opponent's going to wait out their switch clock here, then come in with a Shadow for Alligator. So we respond with the Ludicolo. Now they could be running Ice Beam. We're definitely going to shield the first move. It is the Ice Beam here, and we are going to over farm in this matchup, going for an Energy Ball. An Energy Ball from this range should be enough damage to take out the Shadow for Alligator. So the opponent used their final shield, and at this point, we've just got to be very careful of a catch. We're going to double shield. The opponent does go for a second Ice Beam. Then they swap into their Sneasler. So we can go for the Scald. Scald, we go for the Undercharge. It's still takes them out though and that's fine though because we can swap and make a beautiful catch catching it onto the pilo swine this is another ice beam the opponent does correctly undercharge that which is a smart play but i don't think it's going to be enough for them as we make it to an avalanche getting them into range where anything we throw would take them out here but we do make it to another energy ball taking out the shadow for alligator and we're able to take that game so going into the next game, we've got a triple regional theme team with Kangaskhan in the lead up against Giratina. This is a very good matchup for us as we are double resisting the Shadow Claw damage and we've also got Crunch to hit for super effective. We're going to let the first move go through here. You can see Dragon Claws, they're really not going to add up that much. Whereas Crunch does about 
well, 40% of their health-ish, maybe a little bit less than that, but with the mud slap damage, and especially after debuffing their defense, we can actually overfarm significantly in this matchup before we have to throw the next charge move here. So we're gonna no shield once again. They go for another Dragon Claw. We are going to continue to overfarm, getting very greedy, and at this point, they will get us very low. So we're just gonna make sure the opponent doesn't make some sort of snipe coming in with a counter user, but we do come out with back-to-back -back charge moves, but unfortunately, we're only getting one off because we were quite greedy. We do get the debuff with their defense there, and that's great because we can align our Relicanth up against the Skeleton Dirge, also swapping, making a catch onto our uh, Durant here, and we're actually running Metal Claw, it looks like, which is very strange. I definitely do not recommend that. I mean, to be honest, I don't recommend you run Durant anyways, but definitely run Bug by. I mean, I know Bug is resisted by, like, the most typings in the entire game, but it's still better than Metal Claw, so, yeah, definitely don't run Metal Claw. We do at least make it to another Exes, though. You can see it's not going to do that much damage in this matchup, but it will put them into range where we can possibly take them out with an Aquatel here. We do have a charge move loaded. We're going to choose to No Shield the first move. They go for a Hydro Cannon, which still not throwing any energy here and once again gonna no shield the next hydro cannon the opponent's gonna swap back into their skeleton dirge so we're gonna over farm go for an aquatel here aquatel will not be enough damage to take them out there a second aquatel will do the job the opponent's gonna over farm here which i definitely think is a mistake they should definitely throw the charge move but either way it doesn't matter we can definitely outpace them to the final charge move here and to play it safe we go for the ancient power taking out the for alligator and we're able to take that game into next game, we've got a level 50 Tangler in the lead, and obviously picking up an awful lead into Pidgeot. We're going to say swap into our Braviary, and this isn't too bad of a matchup, but unfortunately we are running Steel Wing, which is resisted damage, so it's not going to put them into range where one close combat or one flight will take out the Swampert, but we're going to fire it off anyways, grabbing a shield from the opponent. And at this point, we're actually going to shield as well here. We will make it to another close combat before the opponent makes it to the next Hydro Cannon. And once again, throwing on the potential CMP tie. The opponent does throw straight away here and they double shield their Swampert. So definitely just going to let this move go through here. We can now come in with our Tangler, go for a huge Vine Whip farm down. And unfortunately, unlike, ta unlike Tangrowth, we don't have that Rock Side coverage to hit Flyers for super effective damage, but we still do have Sludge Bomb. So probably just going to throw it straight away here. What we don't really want to do is swap out immediately because the opponent can then just go for a Feather Dance up against our Electros there. So going for the Sludge Bomb, not really doing that much damage there, but the opponent swaps out. They didn't even debuff our attack there, and that is huge for us because now we can go for a Crunch. Crunch is going to get the debuff, and that might be huge. That might allow us to go for a full Spark Farm Down from this range. It will be very close, but we get the Farm Down. We also come out with a Liquidation loaded. And by the way, I think Liquidation and Crunch are the exact same charge move, just different typings there. And you can see we also get a defense drop. It doesn't really matter. We should live a Brave Bird. They just go for the Feather Dance there. And now we're actually going to swap into our Tangler. Go for the Vine with Farm Down. And we're able to take that game. Into the next game, we see Breloom into Lantern. So a very good lead matchup for us. The opponent got a safe swap into Mandibuzz. And we've got the perfect response with a Shadow Tyranitar. We also do uh, farm up quite a lot on our Breloom before swapping out, which I do really like that play, since the Tyranitar is just going to completely wall this Mandibuzz. Although you can see here, by the time they make it to a third Dark Pulse, honestly, that might take us out. So unfortunately, can't go for a full Smackdown farm down. Instead, just going to go for the Stone Edge, actually grabbing a shield from the opponent. So definitely just shield in this matchup. And at this point, we can just go for a full Smackdown farm down. They don't even make it to another Aerial Ace. They come back in with the Lantern. That's absolutely fine. We are making it to a Stone Edge, and Stone Edge is going to do big damage up against the Lantern. They do get the Spark Farm down, but that's fine. Braylon will wall them, and somehow the opponent gets two charms in there for free, basically, which doesn't make any sense, but it doesn't matter. We come in with our Shadow Typhlosion, completely destroying that team there, and we're able to take that game. Into next game, we've got, I believe, three... Uh, fully maxed out level 50 shadow grass type Pokemon up against a Giratina which isn't great for us but we are running Dazzling Gleam for coverage and if the opponent doesn't know about the Dazzling Gleam it's going to hit for huge damage there at this point we can just safely let this go through Honestly, I'm not 100% sure if a Leaf Blade will KO, but we might as well just throw it anyways. Throw it before they make it to the next charge move, and the opponent's actually going to shield that. But not only that, they throw their energy. They definitely could have gone for the full Shadow Claw farm down, but that's fine with us. We're now going to come in with our Razor Leaf Shadow Vile Plume. Going to no shield the first charge move here, as the opponent's just going to go for a Dragon Claw, and we should be able to get that fully resisted Razor Leaf farm down. 
The opponent's going to come in with a Cresselia, so I don't think we're making it to the Moonblast. Just going to settle for a Sludge Bomb, and Sludge Bomb, it's not going to hit that hard, but it does get them into the Yellow Health range. And we make a little bit of a questionable catch there, catching a Grass Knot, which of course would have been double resisted on our Shadow Vile Plume. And we also bait out a Registeel. Now, honestly, I'm not sure how we're going to win this, but we do have a slight energy advantage and a Shield advantage. So let's see what Shadow Cradilly can do in the Ultra League, even up against a Registeel, which is one of the hardest counters we're gonna go for a second grass knot it doesn't even get them into the yellow health range which is very sad for us we're now going to probably double shield here yep gonna double shield as the opponent full sense of focus bath both times very unlike reggie still to not go for the zap cannon fishing for a bit uh, fishing for a debuff but that's fine with us we're now gonna make it to back to back grass knots this will get the reggie still fairly low so the opponent actually use their final shield we swap back into our shadow vile plume and at this point, the opponent will throw a charge move here. The opponent is going to go for a Grass Knot, I believe that was. It's double resisted. It does take us out here. But the opponent's just going to throw straight away. And I believe this is just going to be another Grass Knot. They needed to full send the Future Sight now. Because unfortunately for them, we make it to back-to-back -back charge moves. Rockside will be taking out Cresselia. And we've got a Grass Knot loaded to throw into the Registeel. Coming back in. And Grass Knot takes out the Registeel. And we're able to take that game. So going into next battle, we lead with a Sand Attack Star Raptor into Ampharos, not ideal, we're gonna say swap into our Gengar, they go for Brutal Swing, and then they come in with Incineroar, but we are running a very unusual moveset on our Gengar, Sludge Bomb, but also Focus Blast, one shot in the Incineroar, flipping switch advantage, the opponent comes back in with the Ampharos, it looks like they're going for the full farm down, but then they panic, they throw a charge move on CMP, losing the CMP tie, and Gengar grabbing a shield from the uh, Ampharos there, before they take us out with a Brutal Swing, we're now she's gonna come in with our Star Raptor, which is quite interesting but we're just gonna go straight for the fly here fly from this range probably would take them out there so it does make sense not to debuff our defense and at this point we're just gonna fully sacrifice it dragon pulse will be taking us out quite an unusual move set from the amphros there running brutal swing and dragon pulse but that's fine we're gonna shield the final charge move coming from the amphros and the opponent has a polyrath in the back and this is where dazzling gleam is gonna be very nice for us we full send it and dazzling gleam near one shots the polyrath one more shadow claw takes them out and we're able to take that game. Into next game, we're going to see Durant into a Shadow Dragonite. So, of course, not great for us, but we are resisting the Dragon Tail damage. And the opponent's just going to throw a Dragon Claw straight away. So, of course, we are going to resist this as well. So, going to let it go through here. And if the opponent doesn't know about the Stone Edge coverage from a Durant, they're about to find out. That Stone Edge one shots the Shadow Dragonite. We're now going to say swap into Blissey. And I was thinking about this. I was not sure whether to include this battle because Blissey is a bit like, is it really spicy? But I guess technically, a lot of people don't use it it's not very good so does that count as spice i'm not sure personally i don't want to see blissey being used again but for the sake of this battle i think the rest of the team is also very spicy so we've included it anyways we're going for a very weird bait there going for psychic up against greninja but also grabbing the shield there from the threat of a potential wild charge I personally would have just farmed to the back-to-back -back wild charges before throwing, but either way, this is fine. We will just barely make it to the wild charge before they can make it to another charge roof here. And wild charge is going to hit for pretty big damage coming from a Blissey. And the opponent will finally be able to take out the Blissey here, but that's fine. The damage has been done. I think at this point, we just come in with our Durant, force the opponent to throw their energy, and we've put them into range where we can probably just bite farm them down before they make it to the next charge move. And Gumshoes is going to come in. This is a level 50 maxed out Gumshoes. And they come in with the Galissapod. We are, of course, double resisting the Shadow Claw damage. We've got Rock Tomb here, so I assume we're probably just going to shield both the uh, charge moves here just to play it safe. And unfortunately, the energy generation from Bite is very, very bad. So they do make it to back-to-back -back charge moves before we even get off the Rock Tomb. But it doesn't matter at this point. Rock Tomb is going to be shielded, but we debuff there attack so it doesn't matter if they throw two more aerial laces or a liquidation they're not gonna be able to take us out here and we should be able to go for the full bite farm down and we're able to take that game 
So going into the next battle, we see Gyarados into a Virizion, so not ideal for us. But we are actually running Outrage, which will be very nice. It will hit for neutral damage, and typically the moves that you would run on Gyarados would be Dragon Breath, Aqua Tail, and Crunch. So the opponent might not shield this up. We shield up the Stone Edge, which is the correct play. Now we're going straight for the Outrage, and Outrage nearly takes them out. We're then going to swap into our level 50 Clodsire, catching the charge move, and the opponent went for Stone Edge, so that is a very nice catch. But unfortunately, met with an Oranga which is a very interesting pick to see in the Ultra League. We're going straight for the Earthquake, and Earthquake does very little damage up against Oranguru. Of course, we know it's bulky in the Great League, but unfortunately it doesn't really have the stats to make it to a high CP in the Ultra League, so only 2200 CP. We're going for a Sludge Bomb, and we actually grab a shield from the opponent, which is very interesting. I definitely did not expect that, but we're now going to come in with the Gyarados, and we're going to overfarm here, going for a Crunch. They, not, they might not expect Crunch after seeing the Outrage, and they don't they no shield at this point they're going to come in with a greedent we can just safely no shield the body sam here it won't quite take us out they won't be able to fast move farm us down with the mud shots either but we're going to swap out anyways come in with the landorus we do have to watch for a potential catch onto the verizzi on there as they have very minimal hp so it looks like we are very wary of that always trying to over farm here going for the sandseer storm this isn't going to do that much damage but it will debuff their attack meaning we can actually just let this next move go through here we're going to no shield the body sam because of course they can swap out clear the debuff so it makes sense to no shield it whilst they are debuffed. We can go for another debuff here. Make it to another Sandseer Storm before the opponent throws any of their energy. And now we're going to swap into our Gyarados. Catching the charge move. And Body Sam, even triple debuffed, will be taking us out. But that's fine. They do make it to another Body Sam, but that's okay. We can just safely shield this up. Go for the Mudshot farm down. They do finally swap into Verizion, but it's too late. Doesn't really matter. And we Mudshot farm down the Greedent to take that game. Into the next battle, we see Reuniclus into Dragonite. Not a great lead there. Obviously, I don't know which hidden power typing we are running. So, I assume not something that's great up against Dragonite. So, we say swap into Sork, which isn't a great answer to Dragonite, to be fair. But the opponent's going to respond with Cresselia. And unfortunately, not a lot we can do here. Poison Jab is neutral. Body Sam also neutral. But it's just not going to add up that much. The opponent can take us out with a Grass Knot. And it'll be interesting to see if we come back in with the Reuniclus here. We can see the hidden powers not dealing too much damage. So I'd assume it's probably just something neutral here that doesn't have any interaction with the psychic typing. We are now going to over farm. Unfortunately, well, not over farming, but unfortunately, the opponent does outpace us to the next charge move. It is just a grass dot though, so we can tank that. We can now go for a Shadow Ball, and Shadow Ball will hit for super effective damage, taking out Cresselia. We swap into our Shadow Style Elements there. Unfortunately, not quite able to get the snipe with the Dragon Tail damage, but one more Dragon Tail does take them out there they come in with the greninja and at this point i think we just have to shield this up the opponent gonna go straight for a night stash they don't get the boost which is very nice we're going for the extra dragon tail we need to live this and night stash barely doesn't take us out there we do get the dragon tail farm down simultaneous ko but we still had reuniclus in the lead there so we're able to take that game into the next game, not a great lead, gonna say swap into our Viker Vault and met with a Sylveon, so not ideal. It's also very difficult to time our charge moves four turns up against three turn when both opponents and yourself are gonna be swapping at different times. So unfortunately we let a full charm in for free that time, but it doesn't really matter. Discharge wouldn't take them out even if we got up one extra Volt Switch in. But we're gonna come in with our Genesect, we can no shield. They actually just go for a Psy Shock there, and then we're going for a full resisted Fury Cutter farm down. They then come in with Obstagoon, which is perfect perfectly fine with us. We can go straight for the X Scissor. X Scissor gonna hit for big damage, so the opponent does shield that. We then come in with the Cleaver, and they come back in with their for Alligator. So going straight for the X Scissor, X Scissor is gonna be no shielded. We're going to shield this move here. Actually, the opponent has no shields remaining anyways. So we can outpace them to the next x Scissor. Actually, winning CMP as well. x Scissor will be enough to take out for Alligator. They come back in with the Obstagoon. And I think we possibly would live a Night Sash from this range. But we play it safe. We shield it up. We go straight for the x Scissor. And I believe we have an x Scissor already loaded on our Genesect. So we swap into it. But we're actually going to go for the BM. Go for the Water Techno Blast. And Techno Blast will be taking out the Obstagoon. And we're able to take that game. 
and into I believe the final battle of this video leading Stoutland into Polyrath not ideal so we say swap into our only real response to a Polyrath in Shadow Luxray and as well met with a Trevenant which isn't ideal there but we grab a shield with the Psyche Fangs didn't actually build up to a crunch there so there wasn't any reason for them to shield but now we are going to full send a wild charge this is resisted but they're debuffed and wild charge nearly takes out the Trevenant we get off one more spark taking them out but unfortunately we're still not in a good position as they come in with the Polyrath. So we are just going to come in with our Stoutland here. And honestly, I think you just no shield this first move here. The opponent is going to go for an Icy Wind, going for the debuff. And hopefully the opponent just doesn't know about Wild Charge. So we're going to full send it, throwing it straight away here. And Wild Charge is no shielded. We then get the Counter Snipe with our Lycan Rock. And they've got Talent Flame in the back. So this looks pretty good. We are going for a bait though, which I don't know if that is necessary. But we grab the final shield anyways. At this point, we should live a Brave but, but we're going to play it safe. Shielding up a flame charge. Doesn't really matter. We make it to the stone edge. This is going to hit for double super effective damage. Easily one shot in the talent flame. And we're able to take that game. So that's going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, please make sure you leave a like. Leave a comment letting me know. And as well, don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. And if you want to take your or even further, you can now become a channel member with perks including early access to new videos, shoutouts at the end of each video, custom loyalty badges, and custom emojis to use in the comments. I want to say a massive thank you to everyone that has already become a channel member. Your support is greatly appreciated. And with that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.